Those of you may also know him uh, from Chappelle's show, his three Comedy Central specials. Please give it up for Christian Finnegan. You know, it's weird uh, coming up here in this context. It feels like I'm like the defendant on the people's court. <laughs> like I somehow have to respond to what just happened. In my defense, I will say yes, it was weird to buy a blue dildo, but... <laughs> Camry and I have been married 10 years, so now it's the balls that are blue. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> right? Come on. Come. No. Uh, uh, and I do want to say, just on the pun front, uh, you know, we were talking about dads and puns, and I just very quickly want to just give you guys the greatest dad fucking pun ever. My dad used to say this to me all the time, and I say it to Camry all the time to annoy her, and it's like a... Uh, out of the heavens and through the clouds roared the thunder god and his filly. I'm Thor, he cried. And his horse replied, Cause you forgot your thaddle, filly. <laughs> Come on. I'm Thor. Get it? I'm Thor. You got his, tha you got his thaddle. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, as you can see from my wife's story, she was quite a trollop. And, uh... <laughs> I also did a lot of P and V in my pre-marriage days, uh, and uh, I was never—I I will say that I was never a, a uh, what you call a libertine. I, I've been in New York since 1991, and so I came of age in the early 90s, which is the worst sexual period in American history, <laughs> where it was just like AIDS, 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 AIDS all the time. Uh, so it was not really like a, a girls gone wild type era, but I did, you know, I was a young man in New York City doing, doing some, uh, basically in my life, I've had girlfriends and I've had one night stands. I've never had what you would call a fuck buddy until I met this woman, Beth. Uh, I've had a lot of relationships that should have been one nighters and a lot of one nighters that sort of metastasized into relationships, but I'd never, <laughs> I had never had someone who would just kind of like, you would have sex with once every five days for a few months. And this was Beth. And I don't want to malign Beth because she's a, she was a lovely woman. And uh, now she is married with children. And she runs a very successful independent greeting card business. And uh, so I don't want to make it sound like I'm, I'm, I'm saying anything bad about her. Um, so we were having sex off and on for about four months. And it was very weird for me because, like I said, I'd never had that sort of just sort of like a period of one night stands with the same person for a long time. And at one point she asked me if I wanted to go on a double date with her two friends. And uh, I thought like, oh, I guess this must be a relationship now. And so we went out uh, on this, uh, this double date uh, with her two friends who, uh, I don't know their names or maybe I blocked them out. So I'm just gonna refer to them as Sonny and Cher. <laughs> which may be the gayest way I could express it. But uh, yes, Sonny and Cher, I mean, that's what I'm going to call them. And uh, they were lovely women. Uh, Cher was in Beth's uh, musical theater uh, improv troupe. And you know, that's what kind of girl this was. Very high quality. And uh, <laughs> Sonny was her boyfriend who I knew very little about other than the fact that occasionally, Beth told me, this is before I knew we were going to go on a double date with him. Uh, Beth told me that occasionally uh, Cher would fuck Sonny in the ass with a, with a strap-on dildo. And listen, no judging. No judging, okay? Let he who has not had at least a pinky <laughs> throw the first stone, okay? <laughs> but it just, the whole strap-on thing always felt a, just a little too overt for me. Do you know what I mean? It felt a little too just kind of like, like, ah, you know, uh, and Beth would constantly refer to them because she was good friends with, with, with Cher. And she'd be like, oh, like Sonny and Cher, uh, you know, uh, Sonny, uh, Sonny's a man, an IT manager. And I'd be like, oh, did he manage to get the dildo in his ass? Like, like, uh, <laughs> like oh, Sonny works on Canal Street. Oh, you mean Anal Street? Like, these are the sort of jokes that I would try to entertain her with. Um, and so we went out on a double date with Sonny and Cher. And uh, we went out for Mexican food, which is just the best double date type environment, because, you know, fiesta, <laughs> whole deal. You got your margaritas, you got your chips. There's lots to do. There's lots to look at, lots to do. And so I finally met Sonny and Cher. I thought of Sonny, I immediately, like normal looking dude, but I projected a lot of homoerotic energy onto him. 
which may have just been, this is, this is not 2017. Don't put your fucking 2017 sort of mindset on this. This was 1999, it was a different era. When you found out that a dude liked to get fucked in the ass of dildo, it was just like, that meant something different than it does now. Now it means you're like free and enlightened and in charge of your sexuality. Then I was like, really? <laughs> uh, and so I'm sure I was kind of projecting a vibe onto him that may not have been rational. And uh, as far as Cher goes, I would refer to Cher as a uh, handsome. <laughs> and I don't mean that, like I mean like perfectly lovely woman. Listen, this, is a peri this period of my life, I was 265 pounds. So, n n n beauty queen. And so the four of us, we were just sort of four average looking people eating fajitas together. <laughs> And we had what I imagined to be a very pleasant double date type night. And then Beth was like, you know what? Let's go back to my apartment and smoke some weed. And they were like, let's do it. And I, at this point in my life, I had smoked pot maybe four times in my life. And I didn't know at that point that you never smoke marijuana in the presence of people who are still in the process of judging you. You can smoke pot with people who you will never see again or people who you are very good friends with. But never in the middle. Never people who you're like, oh my God, they're, they're still uh, formulating an opinion of me. Uh, and so we went back to Beth's apartment on, a, on 111th Street and uh, it was a tiny, typical New York apartment and we had to all squeeze into her bedroom because she's this very anal retentive, and not anal in the... In the sunny way but uh very anal retentive roommate who didn't want us like fucking with uh, any of the sort of common area so we were all folded into beth's tiny little room and we all kind of smoked a little weed and i like i said i was a, a novice weed smoker and so i immediately meant went into like train spotting mode do, do, you, do you know what i mean remember that scene in train spotting where you and mcgregor ods and he like sinks into the rug and you feel like you're watching everything from like a 10 foot distance and so I was lying on the bed like Denzel Washington and the Bone Collector, uh, just completely just out of it. And Beth starts kissing me. And I'm like, what are you doing? There are people here. Like, don't, this is awkward. And then Sonny and Cher started making out. And they started playing this little game where, where Cher would go for Sonny's belt. Like, and he'd be like, stop it, stop it. And she would keep going for his belt. And I was like, what is going on right now? Like, why is this happening? <laughs> all in the same room. This doesn't, this doesn't feel right. And then Beth got up and she put on uh, her four CD changer and uh, 1999 people. And she put on the song Darling Nikki. Which you want to talk about fucking Closer by Nine Inch Nails being on the nose. I mean, give me a fucking break, right? She puts on Darling Nikki and she just literally starts dancing in front of the three of us. And this was 1999. She was, it was in that era where she had one of those, remember when women used to wear those sort of lobster bib tops, which were just like a piece of fabric in the front that would come to a point and they would tie in the back? And, and, and she was just like undulating, like, a, like, a, like she was heralding the arrival of Kong. Do, do you know what I mean? Like just, just sort of like, you know, like knew a girl named Nikki and her boob just like kept flopping out <laughs> of the lobster bib and at first I was like oh, Beth uh, they're seeing that and then it dawned on me because Sonny and Cher just started like making out like really intense I like oh fuck this is going down <laughs> this has clearly been like a plan like, I thought that Beth wanting me to meet her friends was, like, her taking this relationship to the next level. It's like, oh, no, she thought, oh, this fucking douchebag I'm having sex with would be the perfect person to have a meaningless group sex experience with. And so she's just, like, undulating to the song, and they're making out, and she's, like, grabbing at his belt, and then the song ends, and then it's like, all right, what now? And then Beth reaches over, and plays Darling Nikki again. <laughs> Which is just awkward, do you know what I mean? Like, you can't redo that moment. And yet, she continues to do the whole fucking song, right? And, as a, and it's just kinda like, it's like when you're watching, you know when, you, when your friend invites you to a play, 
and you spend the whole time being like, oh God, just think of one fucking thing I can compliment afterwards. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. Uh, and so she finishes dancing to Darling Nikki, and then the song ends, and she climbs over onto the bed. And now I guess like, all right, this is a, this is a, a group sex situation that's about to happen. And even then I knew that this was not like a porno group sex situation. This is more like an HBO real sex foursome. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? For some reason, when everyone is unattractive, it just feels dirtier. <laughs> Have you ever watched HBO's Real Sex, where it's just like guys with ponytails and like, and they're like naked, telling you about like Woodstock, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, but I was like, all right, fuck it, sure, why not? And so Beth and I are like making out, and they're at the edge of the bed, and they're making out, and I even like like I I like have her my hand like down Beth's skirt, and I was like, all right, I fucking let's do this, and uh, and then the moment of truth came because Cher uh, <laughs> decided to to reach over the the joint that we were all smoking was up on Beth's dresser, which is right next to the bed, and she had to like climb over us to get to the joint, and she's like. Oh, I need another. I need another hit. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is clearly like a thing to come over here. And so she like reached across us to grab the joint, and her butt was right here, and she farted in my face. Oh. <laughs> 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 and I, I don't. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't remember a lot from the evening, but I do remember saying, and I quote. Wow, this night just take a, took a turn onto Weird Avenue. I, I mean, it's not funny, but that's just what I said. <laughs> and, and of course, this poor woman, she's mortified. And so then, you know, we're all, I kind of like laugh and we're all kind of like, <laughs> and then we try to like get back into it. But it's kind of like that scene at the end of Trading Places. We're like, turn those machines back on. Like, like it doesn't feel right anymore. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, Beth just stands up. She's like, you guys have to leave. Talking to Sonny and Cher's like, you guys got to go right now. And they're like, uh, okay. And, and, they, and, they, and they, they gather their stuff and they, Sonny puts his belt back on and they, and they leave. And, 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 and then Beth immediately takes off her clothes, puts on her widest, biggest granny panties, turns off the light and gets into bed and like goes right to sleep. And this is the, like literally within... 11 minutes from like, oh, I'm going to be fucking two, hopefully not three people. And then I guess we're sleeping now. And so we're like spooning and we're in the dark and I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And then I, this horrible smell hits my nose. I'm like, what's going on? And then Beth begins projectile vomiting. Like, on the pillow, on the floor, like just, we're spooning, and she's just like, Bruh! just all over. I mean, exorcist type vomiting. And so I get up, and I turn on the light, and I'm high. This is like, this is like a high person's nightmare. Oh, what the fuck? And so I'm like, trying to mop her up with like a, an old Beastie Boys t-shirt. Like, I'm like, I'm just trying to clean her up. And, and, and I take all the linens and I like strip her down and I, and I put her on the bed and I try to clean her up as best I can. And I put all the, the, the bedding in the tub and I, and I fill it up with water and there's just like wood chips floating on the top of it. And I left a note on the mantle for the roommate that just said, sorry about the tub. And I'm not proud of this. Then I went home. I, I, if I could go, if I could roll back time, I would not have gone home. I would have stayed there like a good fucking dude. But I was just like, no, thank you. <laughs> and so I went home. And I can literally tell you, that is the last time I ever saw Beth. <laughs> By both of our choice. We, we talked once after that, and it was just kind of like, yeah. 
And I think about her a lot because, you know, I followed her on Facebook for a while and I saw that she has children now. And, and I've also, I've wanted to send her like a card, like a Christmas card, because I do happen to know a woman who runs a greeting card business. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a good night. Here comes the world. 